Welcome back to a new episode of 30 by 30 by Suave. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to make a sort of like a ripple title, like a water ripple title, animated title. And that's it for, oh, in today's episode number 10, 10, 10, 10. All right, so let's go back create and create a new fusion composition. And once we are in the fusion composition, we're going to create a background node and we're going to create a text node. And we also can create the next background node, which is what's going to be doing the little ball dropping animation or water drop, if you want to call it that way. But we're going to disconnect it for now so we can see the text that we're working with. So. We're going to write our text. Let's write Suave. And then we're going to choose the font that we want. For that one, I used a font called Cooper Standard, I think. So let's go and do it again with that same font. And we're going to make it a little bit bigger. Well, it doesn't have to be bigger because then later on, we can adjust that on the Edit tab by changing the video settings in the zoom option. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is to add a mask. Whoop, let me move it. Let me drag it around. And let's adjust the size of it a little bit. So it fits the text. There, that's better. So 0.4. And the first thing that we need to do is to take the solid out and we're going to adjust the border width that we're also going to add the motion blur right now so we don't have to do that later on because we're going to be copying these masks a couple of times to be able to obtain that ripple effect so the next thing is to we can create the keyframe for this right now and that's it as for the base then we're going to create these we're going to copy these, I'm sorry, and we're going to paste it. Also, I'm going to take it out of the way. So it starts there and then also the same thing for this one. So I'm going to copy these and have three in total for the first part. And then we're going to have a fourth one, which is going to be the main one. And this one has to be solid. And that's it for now. So let's animate that first part. And then we're going to animate the last three, the last three, which is going to be the little like, I guess you could say aftermath of it. So let's start by going six frames on the first layer and we're going to bring it all the way down. Then we're going to go two more frames and we're going to bring this one down also. And then we're going to go three frames and add this one down. And then for this one, before we do that, we're gonna, we don't wanna, if we make it go from now on, it might go and end way too quickly, but let's just try and put it at 35 and see how that looks. That looks actually pretty good. Okay, so the next thing to do is to let's let's center this one okay so the next thing is going to be to copy these and we're going to remove the path first of all on this one and this one is not going to do anything right now because we have to change this to the multiply and we are also taking the solid out so this one is going to be inverted also so then we have that little like aftermath, as I said. Okay, so let's go. And once the text is ready, we're gonna, let's see when it ends. Okay, there, 35 it ends. So we're gonna create a keyframe for 35. And I'm gonna copy these two more times. After that, I'm gonna go four frames and animate the first one. Then I'm gonna go three frames and I'm going to animate that second one and I'm going to go two more frames and animate that last one.
So let's see how that looks. Okay, so that's it for the animation of the text as of now. Then the next thing that we can do, we can animate the text out also at right now already. So let's see when the last frame is of the little aftermath ripple. So it's 45. So let's take that into as our base. So let's see 45 and we're going to leave it on for 20 frames. So 65 and then on 65, we're going to create a width and height. We're going to go. Um, let's see. Oh, and then in 65, we're also going to create a keyframe for, for the same in the three ripple effects that we had. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing that we did. So we're going to use four frames and it doesn't really matter which one you animate first, but let's animate this one first. So this one is going to end at zero at 69. Then we're going to go three frames and use this one. Then we're going to go two more frames and make this one all the way small. And then we're going to go one more frame and make the main one zero. Let's see how that looks. I don't know if it's a little bit too quick because we could wait, make the, these ones start later. So we're going to take these one and remove those keyframes. Okay, we're going to put point four. So we're going to change that keyframe. We're going to make this one start a little bit later. So we're going to remove these here. So let's see how that looks now. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. So the text is out. So the next thing that we need to do is animate that little water drop, I guess you could say. So for that, we're going to go here and connect this one. And we're going to change it to white. And we're going to make it, we're going to, first of all, put an expression on this one and link, link it to the width. So then when we move this one, Whoop, um, that's weird. Why did it do that? I'm not sure. Yeah, it only has to be once. And we're going to resize these to make it smaller. Let's make it that small. Okay, that's good. So for the little bounce drop that I did was I went to the key, the first keyframe where this started and I added a um, position, position keyframe. And then I went to three frames out and make it a little bit higher. Then I went down two frames and put it there again. And then after that, I just went a couple of frames back and I dragged it all the way up. So. Okay, so my program just crashed. My PC just crashed for some reason. But let's go back and see the animation that we had there. Yeah, but we don't want that little ball to stay there. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here and add a keyframe for the size where on the first time that it hits. So we're going to go to when it bounces and we're going to make it a little bit smaller. And then when it bounces all the way down, it's going to go to zero. Let's see how that looks. Okay. So let's look at it once again and it disappeared. So let's go and see, let's add a motion blur to it. We're going to make it the quality five. I'm going to put a, a, a shot, shutter angle of 100. So the next thing to do is to go to the spline tool and we're going to select these and select the position there. And we're going to press F. So it makes it a little bit smoother. And we're going to do the same thing for all of these. 
There it goes. I'm gonna go to the spline, deselect these. And we're gonna select all of these other ones. We're gonna select that and press F. Then the next thing is to turn our alpha down and let's see how that looks after it renders. Okay, so it rendered out. There it goes. So then we can go and add it to our footage. So let's render it out again. And once it's done, this one the, is the first one that we did. And then I'll show you the second one once it finished rendering. So that was it for today's episode number 10 of 30 by 30. In which we created a sort of like a ripple, water ripple effect animated title. And I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you found something interesting and useful to learn today. And as always, you can check the link in the description to download the Fusion Composition that you can then add onto your project and play around with it and use it on your own projects. So if you liked it, thumbs up, please give it a like because it helps to show it and reach more people. And subscribe if you really enjoy it and you want to watch more content like this. This was episode number 10 of 30 by 30. Bye, Swabi. See you tomorrow.